If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, Adam gives us another tracking update, and I promise you it's not boring this time. No uh, way. He gives tracking tips and talks about tracking tools. A lot of Adam stuff going on in this beginning there of this it one. It is, but it's important. Yeah. Also, how all in- the Adam haters can fast forward. How <laughs> increasing carbs uh, is affecting his cognitive function mm. uh it's messing up his uh, a little cloudy his vocabulary He's saying a little things bit. uh if it could get worse more than normal <laughs> yeah in, in weird ways also did you guys realize today's the final day is it the <gasps> final one this is the final day for the summer star i love how adam says final yeah do it do it final 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 it's uh the final so our starter pack is maps anabolic which is our foundational workout program it also has maps prime which has a self-assessment tool mm which teaches you how to program priming sessions to, to develop better recruitment patterns or even correct imbalances. Hey, let's do what's best for you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Let's think about that. There's a nutritional component. We have a nutrition guide that's included, a fasting guide that's included. And then we gave you forum access in this starter pack. In the forum, you have, you're connected to like 2,000 fitness enthusiasts and you're connected to me, Adam, and Justin so we can help you along the way. So we've taken all these things and we've cut the price in half. That's what the summer starter pack is, and today's the final day for it. So if you've been thinking about it, now's the time to do it. Also, I'd like to add, all of our programs come with a 30-day guarantee anyway, so you kind of have nothing to lose except for maybe some belly fat and stuff like that. So oh, 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 oh. Uh, you can find out about benefit. this at mindpumpmedia.com. Black hole sun, yeah. won't, won't you come, come and wash away the rain? Damn. Yeah. You know, I black hole sun. Yes. Won't you come? Won't you come? That's a great. That's yeah. A great, you guys remember the video to that? The, yeah. the music video. A, yeah, where the uh, the girl's face was like melting. It was weird. Yeah, it was, it was a good. It was a good video. Yeah. I like how I can start you off. Yeah. I never continue though. You notice that? No, it's good. You I'll know. do the first lyric, mm-hmm. and then I let go. You're like my human harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of horrible. But I will not blow you. <laughs> <laughs> no matter, you no must matter. generate that yourself. I thought, no matter, no matter how many you, times you ask me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you, you call it? You keep asking. Yeah. That's what uh, you call it. Yeah. Uh, hey, Justin, turn the lights off. We're going to play Human uh, Harmonica. Hmm. Adam. Yo. How's your nutrition, human, how's your nutrition uh, going, dude? Oh, ironically, it's exactly what I'm doing right now. Are you writing down your food? Ah, uh, no, yeah, yeah, just to, I forget how much uh, this commitment is to do. It's one thing to do it yourself. You've got to display it to the world. Yeah, it's a different step yeah. to, to feel committed Pain to this place. Tampa was a motherfucker, let me tell you, just because uh, there was nothing. Um, and you know what? This is good. I'm glad you brought this up. Yeah. So when, when I travel like that and I'm trying to track food, you know, when I'm home and I eat out somewhere, I automatically like just, you know, round up on certain things because like pay attention. Like when you go to like Chipotle and this is great because you can go into like Fat Secret and you can look up a Chipotle serving of rice, black beans, steak. But if you really pay attention, oh, they to, give you way more than the. Fucking- well, and, <laughs> and not even that. It's just the discrepancy between each person who's serving you. Like one mm-hmm. time I'll go in and, yeah. you know, the chick hooks it up, you know, like and she gives me like, I like, yeah, heavy handed well, Harry. Right. Like and then you go That's to other places it. and it's like super cheap. And you're talking about a when yeah. you talk he about hooks up the meat, the difference of a quarter more serving on your steak, a, you know, half more serving on your rice, another quarter more serving on your your onions and, and bell peppers that probably have olive oil like all over a them. shovel of guac. <laughs> right. So, you know, I think that that becomes the most challenging part for people that are tracking. Everybody gets so hung up that I get a lot of questions right now on, you know, how accurate Adam, do you think that the Fitbit is to your calories burn? Because mine are really It's a guide. It is. That's it, all. It's a guide. And I actually think it's a pretty damn accurate guide where I think more there where there's more discrepancy, more people fuck up is on their own personal tracking. When they when you go somewhere and you because it says on the menu that it's got thirty five hundred or thirty three hundred fifty calories or whatever it may be, you believe that it has to be that. What people don't understand is that can be up to twenty percent off. FDA allows easily. yeah easily, and that's what FDA allows. And you better believe FDA is not coming in and cracking down hardcore on a lot of people. You very <laughs> it's very rare you hear, there are cases like Detour was su- sued for this 
uh, Detour uh, protein bars. But it's very rare to hear a company where FDA comes down on them for being off on their calories. It's recently new that that was that became a law. So and it the law allows them to have lots of room for error, and so people don't realize it. And you better believe. That if you're going somewhere that is a high calorie food that's not ideal for you, they're going to round down. They're going to give you the lower end of what is probably really in there. And then that's based off of what the serving size is supposed to be. And there's lots of room for air in addition to that for the person that's serving it to yeah, you. Yeah, it's, it's a so big... Th- these I are, thought that was part of the secret, though. You know, like if I really believe that it's this many calories, it is. Mm. Yeah, well, right. This all you can test that theory out if you want, I Justin. Was, this all being said is is the the major issue that I think people have with trying to figure out how much they should be eating for themselves. And if you pay attention to my story right now, you'll see like you know my Fitbit says I burned four thousand something calories, and I'm on the bulk right now. But then like yesterday, I had a thirty six hundred calorie day. Well, well, that's not going to work, right? Like you can't do that. Well. Here's the deal. Like I know for sure that I've got to be off by four or five hundred calories because I'm eating out a lot right now. Now, as I get like closer to stage, you know, competition ready, and I get leaner and leaner, I eat out less and less. And then it's all about you buy it, you weigh it, because then you, you can manage it. Yeah, because you have to you be see you have all to be the prep as precise as you possibly can. But even that, yeah. even even measuring, you know, six ounces of chicken thighs, like. Every thigh is not the same. So even if you cut up and you you know weigh six ounces, it's 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 an estimate. Mm-hmm. It's it's better than not having an estimate, but it's an estimate. Well, and this is so uh, I, I mean, look at protein powders and, and pre workouts. You ever seen how when people are like, oh, I use one scoop of protein powder. I'm like, well, let me show you this. Let me see the scoop, and then I'll take yeah. like this heaping scoop. I'm like, that's like one and a half, dude. So There's funny. a line right there. It needs to be up to that line, and that's it. Right. So and funny because that's mainly the argument of why, like, you know, to have the supplements and the protein powders and the bars and all that because it's like it's managed. Like this is not, you know, like it's exactly what it says on the label. No, it's not. It's well, not. And here and now we say that, and then what I always want to make sure I backpedal and cover my tracks with this is that this also tends to turn a lot of people off. That oh the tool isn't that accurate oh it's so far off the baby out the basket exactly so then they just fucking throw everything out the door no let me tell you this we are in a very cool time Uh, and I know some people are are anti wearables and you know the the apps and the and we're the tech stuff that's involved and these are the same people that like hated the wheel right right. (laughs) fuck the wheel right let's just keep walking this this to me is awesome because 15 year guys like us that have been doing this for 15 to 20 years uh i I mean i i had like i was going through multiple different books where I had to look up a food and then I would write it down. It was just, it was crazy the work I had to go through to just get an idea of what I was potentially consuming and what I was potentially burning. It was such an ordeal, I remember It that. was an ordeal. And now we have, we've gotten to a point where we've got some pretty damn good t- tools that give us a pretty good damn idea about what we're consuming and what we're burning. To me, that is awesome. And to me, it is a very useful tool, no matter how off it could be. You're probably better off uh, underestimating. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you, you. Well, let me tell you how I do it. Mm. So if I'm, if I'm trying to bulk, I round down. So when I look at things, I, I, I look at it and think, okay, it's probably a little less than that. They didn't quite right, give me Because you're trying another, to be in a surplus. Because I'm trying to be in a surplus. When I'm trying to lean down, it's the opposite. I round up. I round up on everything because I'd rather round up. Just and, in case. Right. Yeah. So th- that's kind of how I, I use that leeway. the Fat Secret app uh, when I'm tracking is by you know rounding up when I'm trying to cut down, rounding down when I'm trying to, uh, to bulk up. And, and really, I'm just using it as a solid gauge to give me an idea of what today's activity, because I'll tell you right now, what it is good at is being consistent with me and my body and my activity. Like some people are like, well, doesn't the Fitbit, because you're an animated person and you talk with your hands, so isn't it picking up that extra activity? Like, yeah, sure. But I fucking talk like that every day. So the difference between Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And that is technically movement. And it is. It yeah. is movement and it, and it burns calories. If you put that Fitbit on your right, you're right handed or left handed? Well, I'm ambidextrous. Okay, so, so it doesn't if you matter. put on your right hand, and you know when you have private time, yeah, calories yeah. go through the roof. Yes, yeah. I've tracked that before. So, 
Yeah. This wow, it says I took eighty thousand steps in the last <laughs> twenty minutes. How'd that happen? Yeah. yeah so this is I, I think this is where a lot of people I climbed Mount Everest. I called, uh, it, I called it private time. My dick. They get a little hung up on uh, the tracking and they want to throw it out the window. When in reality, it's probably. Uh, the biggest game changer for myself uh, as a coach. It's the, it's it's your best your best bet is to do that. And you know I talk about intuitive eating all the time, but before you get to any type of intuitive anything, you got to know this shit, uh, and that's the best way to do it is to track. Yeah. Now that being said, you've been uh, the last past couple of days. You said you've been having more carbs than you've had in a long time. Yeah. So have now- you noticed any differences besides? Well, uh, today it's kind of funny you asked that too. Today. Um, I'm a little foggy. I've been lost for words multiple times. I've fucked up more more words today than on average, which is normal for me, right? It's normal for me to make up a word, but literally I've done that like five times this morning already. Do you feel less sharp? Is that what you mean? Yeah, less sharp, foggy. Um, that would probably be... Dude, a, that happens to me with uh, with lots of carbohydrates. It's weird, and I hate, hmm. to, I hate to be speculating this early on it already, because, but some things... It's a common anecdote. You hear well, a lot of people say it. Some things that are happening right now with me that are I'm, I'm very fascinated with and I'm, and I'm paying close attention to it is for almost a year now, I have not really consumed over 250 grams of carbs. After we went keto, it completely changed my relationship with fats and carbohydrates. I changed my macro profile going forward, um, and I've seen lots of great benefits from that. Well, since then, because uh, it, it's been a, well over a year since I've competed, I haven't aggressively tried to bulk and put size on. And I do remember when I tried to do that keto, and I had a really hard time with that. I just couldn't get enough calories in. Uh, it's too satiating. Yeah, right. And so I'm I'm now back to reintroducing carbs, and really just for that exact purpose to try and get mm-hmm. me up. Now I'm seeing some really positive things, and then I'm seeing some other things like the fogginess today. That's today is the, marks the second day in a row where I've ran back to back 400 grams of carbs plus, which we're talking about close to double the intake of what I've been consistently eating for quite some time now. Do you find uh, it makes you hungrier doing that as well or sleepier? Do you notice differences in energy? Like uh, energy, because people will say that they'll notice uh, like fluctuations, more fluctuations in their energy. So that's probably better. Okay, so I, I notice fluctuations, but I good and bad. So I'm having an amazing work, amazing workouts right now. Oh, you're probably all glycogened up and yeah, and plus high calorie. I mean, you're also high calorie. Yes, exactly. So there, there's definitely both those, uh, both those uh, come into play, right? When mm-hmm. we're talking about um, how I feel right now, so it's very interesting to me to pay attention to. And this again, going back to the tracking thing, you know, when people speculate on, oh, this makes me feel this way, oh, this and that, and I'm like, eh, until you track and you're really consistent with this, it means nothing to me mm-hmm. because. I feel like uh, real easily I can go and... Well, there's so many variables that yeah, people aren't aware of. It yes. could be a lot of different things. And I don't even like even speculating what we're talking about right now because it is early. Like, let me mm-hmm. let me do this consistently for a while and do I continue to notice those things? It would well, be so that's a very common anecdote that when people reduce carbohydrates and bump fats uh, or go keto, for example, that, that a lot of people will feel sharper in their thinking and clearer... Uh, and when they speak, and they'll have much more level energy. Now that's an anecdote. Um, I don't know if there's any been any studies on healthy people that demonstrate that, but on people with uh, brain disorders um, like Alzheimer's or dementia, um, they do have improvements in cognition. It's actually quite established when people will drop carbohydrates and increase fats. Or just supplement with like ketones. Now they're showing too. So, hmm. and it, and it maybe I mean they call Alzheimer's. Some doctors will call Alzheimer's uh, type three diabetes, or they'll say that it's you know a lot of these these mental issues come from the brain's inability to utilize you know uh, glucose as well as it did before. So going with ketones or fats may be better. But I know myself, man. If I eat tons of carbs, I'm sleepy. I'll get sleepy throughout the day. And foggy, my mind will get foggy for sure, where I don't feel as sharp or as quick um, with I, my words. I definitely feel that right now. I definitely feel the difference in that, and it's uh, it's substantial. I can definitely tell that. Where are your carb sources, by the way? 
Um, I mean, the usual rices, beans, um, but I have pulled from other sources like popcorn, um, my cocoa whip with lots of berries and fruit. So I do a lot of fruit right now. Uh, I have shakes pretty consistently mm-hmm. in the diet. Um, trying to think of a bad source of carbs. I, I cr- I've, I, had, I've had bread because I've had burgers uh, several times now on the bulk. So I've included, mm-hmm. uh, you know, five guys or eating like a gourmet type burger somewhere where we're out. Like I so. just I just get so tired. Like if I eat a large carb meal, God, I feel so tired afterwards. But it has to be pretty, it's got to be pretty big. I can have some and be okay. But if I have like 100 or 200 grams at a sitting, like a big carb meal, Man, I'm 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 dead. I, I'm really, an hour later. I want to take a nap. I'm really liking how responsive though I feel to them uh, in comparison to what I did before. So, like just this last workout, like I made a point, and I hadn't done this in a long time since I was competing days. Uh, I made a point to make sure I had about 100 to 150 grams of carbs before I went to oh, work see. out. Mm-hmm. And man, I just I just had an awesome my my gas tank. I felt like I could more just, stamina. Yeah, my stamina mm-hmm. in the gym. The pump, so then the, and the pump leads over into the psychological part for me because there there is something that uh, I felt I lost on a very low carb and a high fat diet. Although I told you guys before that I felt like I had a, a fuller look to me more consistently, um, I also felt like I didn't get these massive pumps mm-hmm. inside the gym. Sure, but now reintroducing the carbohydrates and it feels like I don't have to do nowhere near what I had to do before. And now I'm getting these just incredible pumps and I can, I can feel, I can feel my skin tighten up and you know, there's a, there's a psychological part that plays into that when you're trying to exercise, when you're Mm -hmm. working out, it's very motivating when I get all aired up and I feel my skin tight. It makes me want to power through and continue. Come on. Who doesn't like a good pump, right, Justin? Yeah. Two pumps in the air, right? (laughs) You don't, you don't like getting a pump. Of course you do. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. It feels good. <laughs> I'm just, it's not like my thing, dude. I'm not like, you know, in front of the mirror. Like, yeah, bro. Look at those arms. Yeah, but you like to pump a little bit. You had yeah. a fun... Uh, Ben's... When we worked out at Ben Pax. That's you, true. It you're brought, like, hey, it brought a little bit this. of that back. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. It's a different... It's definitely a different mentality. And mm-hmm. sometimes, yeah. I, I do like to... I do like to experience that um, and and to feel like my chest is bigger and my arms are bigger. Like, who doesn't like that? It's funny uh, how the how we seek out the pump when we lift weights because we love it so much. But in, in sports, it's the fucking worst thing ever to get a pump. Yeah, exactly. Like, you do not want to – like, if you're like a cyclist, like, right. you don't want to oh, pump shit. in your legs I'm going to lose arms. grip. Or yeah. if you're like a rock climber. they I know rock climbers who actually train in ways to try to prevent – getting a pump in their forearms because then you start to lose your grip. Right. And I've known, uh, God, what, uh, did I know one guy or I knew a guy that knew a guy that did a surgery where they actually cut the fascia so that it wouldn't get so tight when he got pumped Damn. so that he could rock climb. Wow. Yeah, so he could rock really? climb. Really? Mm-hmm. That's, that's fascinating. Because that's He's death. committed. That's death, dude. If you're like in jiu-jitsu or judo, right, uh, you use your hands a lot to grip. Mm-hmm. And especially when I first started training, I'd get these pumps in my forearms because I was so used to lifting weights. Mm-hmm. Then I'd go to jiu-jitsu, and once I got a forearm pumped, my hands were worthless. I couldn't do much with them anymore, and I lost. So it's like the last thing you want in sports. But in, you know, when you're lifting, that's all you want, right? You want that, that pump. It's pretty... Pretty interesting stuff. My as far uh, for me right now, I know I'm going to Hawaii in um, or Kauai, I should say, in August. So right now I'm kind of eating a little bit of a surplus, and then I'm gonna do like a mini cut going into Hawaii. I feel like getting really mm. shredded for yeah. a second. I I'm, haven't done that in a while. I'm trying to push myself to. Uh, I was just who were you we just with last night? Who's asking me this? We were with somebody, and they're asking what I was trying to do. Oh, I ran into a buddy of mine who I used to compete with. That's what it was. And uh, he's like, what are you doing right now? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not competing. I, 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 at least right now, I don't have a desire to hop on stage. But I would like to push my body to that extreme again as far as size while trying to maintain my mobility. So I'm very, I'm, uh, very fascinated with the, the amount of mobility that I still have at the size I am right now. Because this is about where I start to feel... Mm-hmm. Like a meathead a bit. I you know, see. Like I, don't, I, I don't. I was just watching the old video we did. You're on, integrating it, man. On neat. Yeah. Oh. And you could see the that was back when I was competing, right? And you could see my walk. Okay. Oh my god, it's so great you're bringing this up because um. So uh, when that video came out, I started to introduce my friends to our YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff. And uh, one of my friends actually like you know he's like oh it was a great video very informative this and that he's like who's the guy that 
that kind of walks like chicken leg, you know, like, like the one that's kind of like on stilts, mm. you know, and like they were just trying to describe your gait as far as like you're very like rigid in, mm. in the way that you're walking and stuff. And I was like, oh man, uh, if that was, Adam could only hear this. It was, <laughs> yeah. well, it was one of the first things that it's your feet were turned off. It's completely yeah. turned yeah. off. Well, and it was one of the things that my girl was one of the first things that she noticed uh, about me when I went on the whole mobility thing. She's like, She's all. It's a trip watching, walking behind you, and w- watching your gait. Now you actually yeah, look it's totally different. Yeah, she says you, you, your foot, your heel strike, everything the way you move. Uh, in fact, she used to, people used to th- said that I would look kind of pigeon toed when I walk before, and really that's me kind of like that that bodybuilder swiveling my hips and swaying my lats when I walk. Mm-hmm. And I was just watching. I hadn't watched that video in forever. I was because I was, was going to do a write up on Neat, and I was going to tag it up in the um, bio for people to watch. And I hadn't seen that, and I'm watching the way I'm like, oh my god! Like, but that's how I I start to walk is I get really really big. So now I, I want to push those limits again and get to that size and see the difference and see. I, do I, I, I think you'll be fine because I think the reason why you lost your mobility before wasn't because you were big; it was because you just stopped stopped training it. You lost it because you stopped training it. Mm-hmm. If you keep training it, I don't think you're going to lose mobility with size. Of course, with lots of size, things can get in the way. Like uh, like when we were hanging out with Ben Pack and he sat in a squat and he wasn't as low as you, but it wasn't because he didn't have the mobility. Yeah, by the way, big ass hamstrings. By the way, he's got great mobility for a for a bodybuilder, shocking mobility. Yeah, that was surprising. But man. Was his cool. his hamstrings were on his calves, like he couldn't go lower. Right. Tell me, you guys didn't trip out when he got down and got into a, a pistol with me? Yeah. And then I, did you see I had him do the on the sides of his heels on and his do a, a squat all the way down? Like he yeah. he did everything. I was with, actually v- extremely impressed. Yeah. I did not think he would be able to do any of that stuff. Yeah. No. I I, so was I. So I mean, and you're right. Like the only thing that limited. Well, so he's responsive for sure yeah that that's the other part right like so i'm curious to see now if i still kind of have a weird walk but it's not because i'm not mobile anymore it's because i just have got more muscle mass on me and so it just requires Mm. like you guys know i mean you i know you've mentioned it before like you know when my legs start to grow i get this the rubbing of the two of them Mm -hmm. between which the the natural thing your body now wants to do is kind of swivel go around yeah go around right yeah yeah. you you get chafed (laughs) when i I used to let my body through boxer shorts like crazy i started a fire once (laughs) uh no but when my legs when i would push my weight my legs get really big in fact my legs are the size they are now i train them here and there, and I have fun with them, but I don't really hammer them. Mm. They would blow up when I would push my weight, and I would walk like that because I had to. Yeah, because they didn't, they couldn't go straight because they were so big, so they'd go around each other. But that's different. That's different. That's actually something physically being in the way. As far as control and stability, and mobility. If you keep practicing it, you ain't gonna lose it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, what's tough is to do that when you become heavily focused on what I'm doing right now. It's because you have a tough time keeping your mind into. You are so focused on what you're going to do that it's either get big or get hyper mobile well, so now you're trying to do both let, and so well, it's different well let's be honest right. when you're because right now i could live in this 215 to 18 range and manage both i'm talking about an extreme right yeah. now yeah. And, and that's why I, my insta story the other day i prefaced before i started i mean before i started the bulk i said listen um i'm doing this to share my journey because i know for sure there's tons of people out there that can identify with this wanting to be as big as they possibly can and what that looks at looks like. But I also want to let people know that this is, I also know that I'm going against my body. Like I'm fully aware of that. So for the, the morons that think that I'm like, Oh great. Now Adam, we here, we thought he was totally progressing and he's becoming more this way. And now he's back to his meathead body. No, I love to challenge myself and I love to live in and out. And I, the as soon as someone tries to put me in the box, I'm hopping right out into another one. So that's really what it's about. And really where I'm going right now is not where my body should ideally live. You know, if I want to be mobile yet still kind of a buff guy, that is kind of where I should be right about now, where I'm going to push the limits and to push the limits and, and become extreme like that. Mm, you set new standards that way. There's new there's there's a give and take. Are you trying to get yeah. to what 225? No, I'm going to push beyond that. I want to see actually I want to see how how much bigger You're I, so funny, dude. You, yeah, it's like it's summertime and you're bulking. Damn. In the wintertime you were losing well, opposite. no, I'm not going to – I mean, I'll be up there within a month. I'm going to come back down. I'm going to get ripped. That's the, the, the old. So you want to gain like 10 pounds in a month? 
Well, I'm already I'm already walking around over 218, 220 right now, so I'm not. It's not, it's not that far it's like away. Like 230. Yeah, I would like to get somewhere in between. I, I don't have a set number. What it is, I want to get as you big just as feel whatever. Yeah, like yeah. Like I'm, I'm I don't want to say like, oh, I'm on my way to 235 or 230, and uh, you know, when I start to see that, I don't. Yeah. You know, I'm saying about it. I'm trying to to press press those limits while maintaining as as much mobility as I can. And you say that like it's really easy. It's like, oh, you just need to make sure that you do both. And when you when you start to go any extreme in any direction, and this isn't just re- referring to our body and training, it could be anything, you know, there's always a give and take. It, that extreme requires a certain amount of effort and discipline towards the things that benefit that look or that that size to me, which are naturally going to take away from all the great work in order to become as mobile as I became in the last year. The um, I, people don't realize the amount of effort that it went into that. It's so much time. Yeah, so much time I and mean, dedication. To, especially the the progress that I made. I'm sorry, but the last the last year, I I don't know any. Do you know anybody personally that is that went from at the the least amount of or as little mobility as I had and progressed to where where he's at mobility? It, it wise was now? it was a but it was it was because you dedicated to really getting to a certain point. I don't think, and it's it just takes a lot of work. But I don't think maintaining it is going to require nearly as much focus. And dedication, you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. It's at just all. Be, it just you have to. You just have to. Well, there's certain things. It. This is how I explain like dynamic flexibility to people, right? So, when you get to a point, this is like in, in getting into Justin's world of Indian clubs and the mace, the mace bell, I was and, Indian club, and, <laughs> and tools like this. These become these become huge assets when maintaining mobility and and uh, within the shoulders, the hips, and whatever without having to go and do what I like before when I had to break I had to break down each individual joint and say let's address this and I had to do these boring static type stretches and um uh, uh tension type moves to to gain this uh connection back in that area well now that I've got it now I can do like a single move that kind of encompasses all of it for example like uh, I've posted on my Instagram before the really deep squat where I do like a rear delt fly like that requires ankle, hip, thoracic, yeah. all mobility, all in one move. And now that I've gotten to the point where I can get down, now you can the, just do that. Now I can just do yeah. that and it helps keep me fully connected again. And so that's really what, what will, mm. what I'll have to do, you know, to maintain that here, birdie, birdie, step right up all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Mm. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. Our first question is from Fit by Fabian. What is the purpose of doing a partial rep than a full rep? Is there any benefit? Uh, yes, there actually is a benefit to messing with rep ranges. Now, before I get into this, to be very, very clear, Nothing will replace full repetitions. Um, so if you have to pick, always pick full reps. But if your training is good, you're doing full reps, you've got good ranges of motion, and you want to add something to your training, messing with rep ranges can be another technique. And to understand why, you kind of want to understand how muscles contract and how they get stronger and how they adapt. Now, the prevailing theory behind how muscles contract is called the sliding filament theory. And this has to do with muscle fibers attaching to each other at certain points and pulling on each other so that you can contract a muscle. But when you stretch a muscle or lengthen the muscle, those attachment points change. Just like if I were to take two pieces of Velcro, place them on top of each other and they stick, and then if I rip them off and I move them apart a little bit and stick them on again, it's different points of contact, making other points of contact with the, with, with the other piece. And so when you're doing a rep, let's say I do a half rep, and I'm going down into my squat, and instead of stopping at the bottom and coming up, I stop at the halfway point and coming up and come up. Whenever you stop the acceleration of a weight, you actually have an increase in that resistance for a short period of time. So just because you're decelerating it, yeah. that's going to place more resistance at that particular point of the rep. 
So it's already changing the way that your muscles are perceiving the resistance and it's going to cause more stress on those particular attachment points within the filaments of the muscle fiber. So I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not confusing anybody, but all of these things uh, change adaptations within muscle. So like one thing you may do is you may do a half rep and focus on the weaker part of your rep. So if I have a tough time at the bottom of my squat and I'm already like, again, I'm already training well, already doing full rep stuff. I may get a heavy weight, go down to the bottom of squat, only come halfway up and then go back down and kind of play within that range. Or you can play within the stronger part of your rep so that you can add more weight and really overload that strong, you know, typically is the top part of a rep. You can also do this with just intention. Like I'm doing a fly or a peg or, or a cable crossover where I'm bringing the weight together. But then when I get to the middle, I just really squeeze my pecs as hard as possible to create more tension at that particular yeah. type of the rep. It's just one of those variables you can play with. I feel like it's, yeah, it's just interrupting uh, what's hardwired uh, with specific movements because I think we we teach our body constantly what's going to be the most efficient way to move and to move weight uh, within that particular set of movements and operations that you've already uh, hardwired. You've told your body, this is how I'm going to do it. Now, all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm stopping a bit short of, of full range. I have to adjust and accommodate to that. And my muscles are going to, you know, have to, have to like sort of relearn a different, operation Mm -hmm. and so it's it's just good to challenge it from that aspect even if it's just um to 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 get more connected to different parts of the contraction you know what's a good example of this do you guys remember a lot of people may maybe might might not know this exercise i'm sure you guys you know 21s yeah Mm -hmm. totally yeah so you for those of you that don't know so there's 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 a regular barbell curl so i'm standing straight up and i curl the bar all the way up and then all the way down and then there's something called 21s and this is an old school exercise, and it's the same thing as a barbell curl. So I'm standing with the barbell, but the difference is I do seven reps from the bottom of the of the position to the mid-range, and then I go back down. So I do seven halfway up. Then I do seven reps halfway. Uh, I go all the way up to the top, and I go halfway down. So now I do a seven reps halfway down, and then I do seven full reps. So that's 21 reps total. And so someone might look at that and be like, well, what's the difference? Why don't you just do 21 reps with the barbell instead of doing – half up, half down, and then, you know, uh, or, or a third half up, a third down, and then a third full way through. And really, it's just in how you're doing the reps. I'm stopping the bar, the barbell yeah. from going all the way up. I'm having to change directions. I'm having to send a different signal. Um, I'm fatiguing well, my decelerating muscles. Decelerating the force, yeah. So, like, I mean, even from an athletic standpoint, if I'm all, like, full reps, you know, full range is always ideal, but, um, you know, you don't get, you don't get things that that happen within a you know a, a set of movements in a sport that are consistent, you know, and so you're constantly you have to overcome a lot of different types of forces all the time, and so it just makes more sense to be able to react uh, by decelerating those forces. So if you're going to decelerate them at like a shorter angle. Uh, you know, you need to be good and efficient at that too. Well, mm-hmm. when you when you make the parallels with sports, the first thing that comes to mind is when a football player, or a soccer player, cuts from left to right really right. fast. That's not a full squat. No, mm-hmm. that's a partial rep. That's a partial explosive rep. So there's definitely benefits to it and carryovers to and and where I see it is the control. It teaches you yeah. control. You know, instead of this, I lift the weight up, which you see a lot of people do. They just kind of lift it up and they drop it down. They lift it up, they drop it down. You know, having to catch it halfway and then right back up and do these partial type reps forces to have control through the through the shortened range of motion. And so, I think it t- uh, teaches much uh, teaches good control. So I think there's benefits from there. And then I also see uh, the benefits from a hypertrophy side, like a BFR. Like for example, like when you do BFR. Uh, you don't need to do full reps. You're just pumping blood, and we're trying to uh, we're trying to exaggerate the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, right? We're just trying to expand, trying to shoot as much blood into the muscle to expand, right? So I'll use short reps. Very rarely I do this, but I normally tend to incorporate them if ever. Uh, when I'm uh, hypertrophy focused, so if I'm chasing the pump that day and I'm in phase three of one of our programs. 
you know, you might see me do, you know, barbell curls and then I'll do like these pumping reps right afterwards because I'm in a phase where I'm trying to put emphasis on uh, the pump. And so that is another way to pump more blood into a muscle really quick. Mm. So partial reps are good for that. Yeah. Messing with the rep ranges is just, it's another tool belt, uh, tool, excuse me, in your tool belt or your arsenal for training. Mm. But it's an it's it's I would consider it a more advanced uh, technique. So yeah, it's at the bottom towards yeah, so, first priorities. Yeah, so first master yeah control, master full ranges of motion with control and stability, master you know the the, the exercises that give you the best bang for your buck. But then you can throw the stuff in like one like I'll tell you what if you're advanced and you want to take a set to uh, ultimate intensity, go to failure. And I don't recommend this all frequently, but every once in a while. Maybe go to failure on full rep and then squeeze out some partial reps and you'll be in a whole world of pain. It'll challenge you in a completely different Isn't way. Isn't that interesting how many acute variables there are and yet people will try and get stimulated by like chemicals and pre-workouts and all this other shit. When they haven't even dude, like, have, played around with half the stuff, have fun with your workout. It's like, oh my god, dude, just ex- just do all. You know, if, if you're that bored, like, yeah, you know, experience something else like this technique. Absolutely. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. The next question is from Andre Ead. What is a piece of health, fitness, life advice that you always hand out but have a hard time following yourself? Mm, ouch. <laughs> this is easy for me. <laughs> oh, go then. Let, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. Um, when I do yoga and when I meditate, I talk about it a lot. I'll talk about it on social media. I'll talk about it on the podcast because I notice such a profound uh, benefit from doing them, probably because those are two things that I need. Uh, the most. I, I tend to be tight. My body is not limber. Mobility is not a strength of mine. And um, sitting quietly doing you know nothing is very difficult for me to do. Um, and so when I do do those things, I notice the benefit and I talk about them a lot. And so I think people assume that I do tons of yoga and I meditate all the time. But the reality is those are two things that are very difficult for me to be consistent with. If I don't like force almost force myself or really make it a priority i'll go weeks or months without ever doing either one it's those are just very very two very tough things for me and i I had this conversation with my girlfriend uh frequently because those are two things that she's good at and uh she's uh you know she tends to follow my workouts when we lift and i tend to blow her off when it comes to the things that she's good at which is yoga and meditating and i told her you know i said listen i said you're going to, I need you to force me, like make me do it because I'm really good at finding excuses and other things I need to do. And I'm very good at selling that and uh, I'll convince you. So I need you to kind of push me to do those things. Cause I know that for me to develop a practice in those things, I'm going to need some, some strong outside kind of motivation, even though objectively I know how beneficial they are. So those are the two things for, e- for easy for me that I, I can point out as things that I have a hard time following myself. Yeah, I think uh, I'll go ahead because I know mine's weakness is which I always try and stay ahead of because I'm very health motivated when I eat. Uh, However, like I know I don't hit anywhere close to the amount of vegetables I should be eating. And that's something that like I just I inherently know I'm kind of I don't cook, you know, and so I'm just like I kind of just roll with whatever's there. And then try and organize it in a way that's, you know, as healthy as I can make it. But uh, at the same time, like, I know that's a weakness. Like, so I I tended to uh, I'll go back and forth with, like, the CSA. Like, that, that's really helpful for me because then if it's there and it's in my house. What's CSA? It, it, it's one of those community, um, like, they, they – you work with a farm where they, oh, they deliver oh very cool um vegetables like fresh and stuff so um yeah so that's something i have to literally like do that 
or I just I, I just don't even like pay attention to. Do you it, go really. a whole day? Like, do you go for like a whole day or whatever without ever eating vegetables? No, I don't. I just don't eat that. Like, I eat the small portions of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you think you should eat more? Definitely. Mm. Definitely should eat more. Okay. Um. God, I God, I, I'm trying to think here. What I give advice to that I have a really hard time. I don't like to give advice on things that I don't do myself. Um. If there's something, but I I think I admit this a lot on the show and talk about this. If there's something that I I tell people is not good, not ideal, that I probably still do in my life is probably artificial sweeteners. Mm. If I'm being completely honest, you have a little bit of addiction to them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I I love uh, I love Diet Coke. I actually like the taste of Diet Coke. Um, and when I, what I tend to do is I tend to justify me allowing that into my diet because everything else is so dialed. I'm so I'm exercising, I'm training oh, yeah. good, I'm good on my vegetables, I'm balanced on my macros. So this is my this is and my cheat. It. Yeah, this yeah. instead of like I don't have these crazy like most any other bad things I used to allow. Like I used to be terrible at eating vegetables. I've I really feel like I've trained myself uh, to fix that. I'm good about it now. Um, I was somebody in the past that ate candy and ice cream and did a lot of that stuff. That's totally out of my diet. I had an upside down, uh, inverse relationship with carbohydrates and fat. I feel like I've fixed and balanced that out a lot. If there's anything that has remained in my diet pretty consistently is like, so if I'm at a coffee place or, I mean, if I'm at a breakfast, I'm out. Um, I'm, I'm using an artificial sweetener inside my coffee. Uh, I'll have the occasional, um, you know, speed, speed stack type of thing, like an energy drink. Uh, and we're talking, I'm being very honest here. It's very rare that I do these things, but they do still find their way into, uh, my diet. And I speak out openly Mm -hmm. on that. They are not ideal for us. And even like the diet Cokes, like right now, what I am doing is I'm sharing with people, uh, how often uh, the the less ideal foods enter my food rotation. And if you look at my food rotation, it's pretty damn fucking dialed uh, aside from the occasional protein bar or the occasional Diet Coke that I enjoy and allow in there. And that's probably the one thing that I advise against that I do still have a hard time completely eliminating because like you said you know i would agree that i'm addicted to the i, I crave a, a diet coke i actually enjoy the taste of it with, especially with certain foods. do you like diet coke better than regular coke oh yeah absolutely that's weird yeah yeah no definitely wow um, yeah it's because you drank so much of it you must have just mm. developed a flavor yeah of regular coke is too sweet man. yeah exactly regular Ugh. regular coke tastes like i'm sucking down sugar or syrup well you are yeah. Well, yeah. No. Well, and at least with Diet Coke, I feel like it's a watered. It tastes like a, that a little bit. It tastes like a watered down version to me. So now, it, did you grow it, up it, drinking soda? I did. Oh yeah. But so, regular soda. I was a major Pepsi, Coke, candy, ice cream. So you know what's interesting about this? So I we never had soda in my house growing up. Never. I never never had soda. The only time I had soda was when we would go out to pizza with family and then then, then my parents would be like, oh, you know. You Which, get by the soda. way, like I feel like you can't have pizza and not have a Coke. Yeah. I just, it uh, so, ruins so the pizza root beer. Root beer. Root beer. So yeah. I would have root beer with my pizza. Thank you. So, um, but never, 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 never had soda growing it's totally up. Different. It's like grape, and, grape soda. <laughs> and so now, at the, now as an adult, every once in a while, I'll be somewhere, maybe a movie, especially I'm at the movies for whatever reason, I'll be like, you know what? Maybe I'll try a little soda. I'm going to have a little bit. Let's just, you know, let's just... And I can't finish it. Even even though I buy it, I'll have like four sips, and then I'm like over it. And I wonder if it's because I just never had it as a kid, so I don't have that same, I don't know, that same craving or tolerance. It's really strange because I can eat candy if I want to, my but I can't do soda. My brother used to soda. drink like those double gulps at Seven Eleven. Jeez, that's just oh so my much. God, oh, I had all that. St- to Hunter, those. In high school, that was like the thing was stop by Seven Eleven, get like the fucking super uh, big gulp, and I would drink soda. I, I drink. <laughs> Remember that? That was like the is like they would just have these ungodly sized drinks. Bro, there. It, it's like two hundred grams of sugar. I'll oh tell you more. One of the things that I definitely attribute to my challenge of building muscle and getting bigger as a young kid was majority of the calories I consumed were sugar, candy, and what we would call like empty calories, right? For the yeah. most part, they're not, I'm not getting a lot of big nutrient bang for my <laughs> buck by, but I was getting enough calories to keep me satiated for all the, cause I was a kid, man, I was, I yeah. can't imagine the amount of calorie. What I know I burn right now. I could eat one of those Pillsbury, like, like raw cookie dough, the whole thing. Like I would buy that and then walk home and eat the. <laughs> 
<laughs> Are you kidding? Me? Yeah, oh. dude. I was. I was, I was bad. I was definitely definitely bad <laughs> with with sugar. Sugar has always been a a challenge for me, and even as an adult, it's something that I feel like it's like hardwired into me. Everything from the psychological part that you make those connections of a you know fun time, going to the movies, having popcorn, enjoying it. Like now, did you ever have a, a moment like uh, like this? I'll give you one. So I re- my parents, God, where'd they go? I think they went to Italy or something, um, and so I stayed with my grandma, and I must have been 16 or whatever, and so I was staying with my grandparents, and my grandma, old school Sicilian, wakes up in the morning when I would wake up, would make me all these eggs, and then would make me like whatever I wanted, like she'd make me, right? So I ate <laughs> steak and eggs and bacon and... Like, cause those are the things I wanted all the time, and my grandma would make them for me. It'd be awesome. I'd come home, and there was my steak, and I, you know, and I noticed, like, here I was. I had been lifting weights for already for two, three years, struggling to put on size, and all of a sudden, staying at my grandma's house for like a month, I'm putting on <laughs> muscle. I'm getting strong, and I remember putting two and two together, going, "Oh shit, it's because I'm eating all the steak and like eggs and stuff." And before I was eating a bunch of other shit that. With just empty calories. It was so mind blowing. Can you imagine how awesome it'd be to have your grandma on like a, a protein powder or something? Granny gains. Gra- yeah. Dude. Well, yeah. I know my that- grandma, let me tell you something. Yeah. My cousin She would sell it out. My cousin got divorced at he was thirty. Poor guy, right? Got divorced. I mean, don't feel bad for him now. He's got another wife, two kids, beautiful home, very successful. But anyway, it's a very tough time for him. He got divorced, house fucking foreclosed. It was just everything was horrible. Had to move in with my grandparents because he Got a job up here in San Jose. Moved in with my grandparents. And my grandma does not give... She's Like I said, she's old school Sicilian. So like he'd be ironing his shirt for work because he worked in banking. And she'd get so mad. No, I'd do it for you. And she'd like push him out of the way and like iron for him. Or she'd like make him breakfast in the morning no matter how early he got up. And she'd pack him these lunches. I get him the photo of my cousin. It's like three months. Three months after he's living with my grandma. I call him up. I'm like, hey, man, how you doing, bro? He's like, bro, I gained fucking 15 pounds. He goes, I can't. He goes, I don't know what to do. I can't do this anymore. He's like, I'm going to just get you obese. I can't handle it. So I'm like, you just got to tell her. I said, tell Nonna that you got to eat this. You got to eat that. And he goes, he goes, you you think I'm stupid? He goes, of course I do that. She packs him. She would pack him these sandwiches for work. And if he didn't take them, she'd get offended. So he had to take them. These massive like ciabatta roll fucking just big it's like a it's like a it's like a two large like togo sandwiches right yeah, like triple meat and they're delicious and they'd have yeah. sauce on them and all these different oh things just amazing right i want to go to your granny so he tells my grand. so he goes to the grocery store and he buys really thin uh like low calorie bread and he goes listen he goes no no i want you to make my sandwich with this bread over here and she's like that's so small you're a big boy <laughs> <laughs> you're a bigger boy you need to eat more you're like you yeah I'm gonna be a bigger boy if you keep and it and he goes no no I'm getting fat and she's like no you look so healthy you look so and he's like listen I'm getting fat please make me a sandwich with this bread and so she's like okay so he, he wakes up in the morning she has his breakfast for me eats it he grabs his bag of lunch and he goes wow he goes it's a heavy ass sandwich. She goes, "What's this?" It's like all meat. Now. So, he, no, no. so he goes to work, bro. He opens it up and he takes a picture and he sends it to me. My grandma used four pieces of bread to make <laughs> fucking, like a, du- a double decker. She made it was like it was like slice of bread, <laughs> like meat, cheese, vegetable sauce. Slice of bread, meat, cheese, vegetable oh sauce. Slices God. like a four quad <laughs> quad decker. It was a fucking quad decker quad sandwich. Quad decker dude. sandwich. Yeah. So. <laughs> If you guys want to gain mass, he's, he's gonna unhinge his jaw oh, just to Adam, get it. Go live with, nah. live with my grandma. I guarantee you. Oh, put on size oh I live with I live with my grandma when I moved up here and I became a personal trainer. Um, she did not do those things for me. My grandmother actually lived off of TV dinners and off of canned vegetables, and that's what she was trying to feed me. And I was like, this can't, <laughs> this is not gonna work. <laughs> so I fed myself, but. What I did know, or what I did find out at that time, and that was when I was first uh, getting into training, and I first started tracking and looking at stuff, and I realized that I was grossly under eating protein, and I was over consuming sugar, candy, mm. and sweets and stuff like that. And that I know that. I mean, I it wasn't until my twenties till I stopped. I mean, a bowl of cereal was a staple breakfast for me for years and years Damn and years. It. I mean, yeah. I, just, I haven't had a bowl, bowl of cereal so long. Oh, you know how I, good that sounds. I haven't in forever. Yeah, like, like golden grams. That was very normal to mm. me. And even when I got into training and I started to eliminate it, it's funny when you think back, like stuff like that. Like, and I don't know if you guys ever do this, but I do this all the time when I when I assess like how I eat now 
and how what I consider normal eating for myself and how rare something like that, like even when I was conscious of eating well and trying to train or build muscle or do something, that stuff still would be Dude. cycling its way into my diet. So I really yep. try to explain to people that all of this stuff, like I, I right now I we're talking about this one being, you know, back to the original question of, you know, advice about uh, what one of the things I have a hard time following in the Diet Cokes being there. I believe that I will evolve out of that. In the, it's just been a long process for me, and it was one of the last things that I've held on to mm-hmm. from my childhood stuff. Because really, almost everything else has made a, has come full circle for me, and it's not difficult. Like I was a, every night, I had a, a bowl of ice cream every fucking night of my life for twenty something <laughs> years. Like that's not an exaggeration. Like what ice cream was different? I mean, it might have been Thrifties, it might have been Ben and Jerry's, it might have been Haagen Dazs. It was always something different, yeah. but consistently for my entire life until I was thirty something years old. I did I have ice cream almost because I never had I was burning so much that I could get away with You just with thought it. it was just I know I was the same way it was all about extra calories yeah, extra was, calories I remember the last time I ate a bowl of cereal I thought it gave me freaking colon cancer no joke <laughs> I'm serious I went to the doctor and they checked me and they're like no nope. frosted shredded wheat yep eat more fiber okay uh, yeah all right Brenda Farias 51 do you ever fear your kids will develop an un- unhealthy lifestyle? Yeah, mine uh, are good. I, <laughs> nope, not for Adam. Uh, I do. Left ball and right ball. Yeah. I definitely do. You know what? Uh, it's got to be one of the scariest things as a as a fitness well, here, parent. Well, I would think. Yeah. Here's what scares me the most. Because my kids now are getting to the age where they start their they're starting to notice differences in how they look versus others. Mm-hmm. Insecurities start to develop around this age. My, my son's 11, about to turn 12. My daughter's seven, going to turn eight. And it actually happens with girls at younger ages. So it's almost like they're at this level where my daughter's starting to notice these things and my son's starting to notice these things, even though they're different ages. And again, I think it's just because girls tend to notice them differently. So my daughter and both of my, neither one of my kids are overweight or anything like that. We eat a very healthy diet and, if, if they have a tendency to, to be skinny because both their mom and dad were like that. But like my daughter the other day, you know, she comes home from school and she's like, uh, she was, she was upset. And I'm like, what's the matter? She goes, this girl told me I had a fat butt. So she's like I said, she's seven years old. And I, I she told me that's going to be an asset later on. Well, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't tell my daughter that. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Don't worry. Uncle Adam strikes again. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. Boys will like that. Yeah. No. Let so, me tell you something there. Sweetie. She um and she was kind of upset about it. And then she's like, Why do I have a a bigger belly and you know than this person or whatever? And it's my seven year old that's asking me that. And then my son And she doesn't have one. That's the crazy part. But she's, they but you know, when you're you know when you're a little girl, little, first of all, little little kids have organs that are uh, that's are larger than their body sometimes, so they they stick out a little bit. Their stomach, they're not fat. You you know this when you see a baby, like the little right. belly sticks out. It just tends a little. It bit. just that's it. And so she notices that compared to other kids or compared to like adults who have really flat stomachs. And uh, I see this when she takes her dance class. Like all the little girls in there, in between, you know what the teacher's doing. They're looking at themselves in the mirror and looking at their hair and checking. Uh, it starts so early. It starts really early. And Ugh. then my son, the other night, we're sitting there having dinner. And he's like, hey, he goes, hey, I think I gained five pounds over the last few months. And I'm like, where'd this come hey, from? Like, what do you mean? Yeah. He's like, well, I'm trying to put on weight because I want to get stronger. Mm. And so I'm very careful with this conversation because you can push them in the opposite direction. Like, you're, my instinct is to be like, you look great the way that you are. Don't worry about it. You're fine. You know, and then that'll just push them in the opposite direction because right. kids aren't stupid. They can sense that you're scared of this topic. And that maybe they're trying to protect me and maybe mm. I am too skinny or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm just asking like, well, why do you want to do that? And what are your, what, you know, what is your strategy? And I'm like, and I'm trying to help them the right way. Like, well, if you want to gain weight, the best thing you can do is eat good, healthy food and lift weights. Cause then you'll put on muscle. And as far as my daughter's concerned, I'm talking to her how kids can be mean and they'll say certain things. And so my big fear really is that my kids are growing up in this Instagram, you know, uh, life where you're flipping through pictures and it's 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 not like when we were kids where we looked at magazines uh, or you you know you're in school and getting bullied by kids because that still exists it's the frequency of it and the volume of it like go through Instagram yeah. and you you will get bombarded you'll go through 50 photos of bodies within you know 10 minutes 
And it's that constant bombardment that you'll, and you'll naturally want to compare yourself and feel inadequate or feel like you're not looking good enough. And so that's one of my, and because I had insecurities as a kid, as a kid growing up, that's really what I fear. And I fear that that will push them to have an unhealthy lifestyle, especially because their dad is in fitness. Mm -hmm. You know, my girlfriend's a personal trainer. Um, Like I don't want them to develop an unhealthy lifestyle where they feel like they need to lose weight or they feel like they need to eat to, to gain weight or they feel like they need to, well, that's you know, the that kind of unhealthy dichotomy. Lifestyle. I feel, I feel like this is like, so I, I feel like I'm a product. I know my mom is very active and, um, but, and my dad also has had this ritual forever of going, you know, to the gym and the spa in the morning, but their eating habits are just so, you know, just shockingly like off and uh, I feel like I'm a product of rebelling against that and uh, me seeking out like becoming, you know, more in tune with nutrition and and diving into the topic and, and figuring out what what really is healthy. And like like that's like I so I fear on the other end of that, like they'll rebel the other that way. they'll rebel against like my ideas and like even as much as I want to uh, do a good job of educating them and and. Uh, abstaining from having certain things in the house and uh, even though they're getting it from wherever else they're staying, their friends, my, you know, my, my parents or or her parents or whoever. um, It's just like, like they know me as this and they know like my wife is similar. We have a mindset where we're just always trying to educate Mm -hmm. and like, you know, this food you want to, you know, this is what's the nutrients in this food. And, and, and like, well, why why don't we have soda in here? You know, they're just like (laughs) yelling at me and it's like, because it's not, it's just not good, man. You know, like I don't want that shit in my house. But now I'm thinking like, maybe I should, you know, have a little, I don't know. It's this weird state where it's like, yeah, I don't want them to rebel, but at the same time, like, I want them to make their own decisions, and I have to be like comfortable in the fact that at least I educated mm-hmm. them. I'm pretty honest too with my kids when they ask questions like that, like, you know, why don't we have soda, or why don't we have dessert? And I'll say to them, I say, well, it tastes good, but when I have it, it just it's, it, it yeah, doesn't make a treat. Me, I don't feel good, and then it doesn't taste good. Like I'll have a little bit, then I stop liking the taste, so that's why I don't buy it. Yeah. So I'm kind of honest with them in that sense. I try not to say things like you'll get fat or where I'm really careful that I need to be careful is when I talk about myself, like I'll, and because kids will internalize it. Like if they hear me say, Ooh, I need to watch what I'm eating. Cause right. I'm Cause you fat. can really easily do that because we feel comfortable with our own relationship, yes. but don't realize what we could be, what message we could send by. Yeah. You don't have to say it directly to your kid. If they hear you say it about yourself, They'll internalize that, like, oh, I'm getting fat, or I need to cut, I need to get leaner for summer, or I want to have a six pack, or, you know, if I flex in the mirror, then they'll they'll see that I value that, yeah, and as and, and them wanting to please their father, mm-hmm. well, my dad values muscle, my dad values strength, or my dad values these physical representations of health. Therefore, I need to be this way to earn my dad's you know respect or whatever, and that could develop kind of a bad, you know, relationship to those kinds of things. It's, it's kind of crazy. And then, and then of course, uh, you know, drive around neighborhoods, man. Like you just don't see kids outside like you used to. You yeah. just don't, it just doesn't happen. That's another concern. Just the concern of, uh, you know, even if it's their friends and their play, like their play habits are different these days, you know? And so just to like, I just hope that they take off with some active form of movement that resonates with them and then they can enjoy that like in a play level where it's not like super structured and like like I feel like we're always having to create these like almost manufacture these these yes. moments for them to move. You do because like my uh, my son will go on his computer and I'll give him a little bit of time to do this again because I don't want to go so extreme in the opposite that he rebels. Yeah. And he'll put his headphones on and I'll hang out with him sometimes in the room and watch what he's doing. And he'll be, he's online with four of his buddies and they're laughing and talking and playing and having a great time. So he's socializing. Mm-hmm. He's having a great time with his friends. Then they'll we'll invite the friends over and you know what they do? The friends will bring their laptops and they'll all sit in the same room and play together. And so it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, like it's like, what do you yeah. do? Right? So you do have to manufacture activity like I put them in camps where they're 
kind of go in, where they do outdoor stuff or like I have a garage gym now that I'm going to do yeah. like family. I'm going to start you doing go hiking with them and everybody just, yeah, you have to do it gets on board. You have to do it with them because yeah. it's just, it just isn't a part of the lifestyle anymore. Well, I feel like, I, I mean, I, I have the, the, the least input on this cause I'm not a father as far as I know. And <laughs> I think that I, I you haven't I, been on Maury Povich yet. Right. I feel, I feel like if, the best way, if if I did have a son or a daughter, for me to make sure that this didn't happen, would be number one would be to lead by example, right? To to show, like I think, living a, a healthy, fit lifestyle uh, for them to want to emulate. Because I think you know, most most kids, and I know there's exceptions to the rule, but most kids look up to their their parents and think of them like, you know, for the majority of their childhood growing up as superheroes, mom and dad. You know, they're all knowing they're all smart they're all this and they they, and then they become teenagers yeah then they become teenagers <laughs> and th- and now this is where and that's, that's exactly where i was yeah. heading then there becomes a transition where opportunities for these type of conversations will present themselves i feel and i think as a parent you have to recognize those opportunities and not just graze over with a short no we don't we don't keep that in the house no i don't want that or it's bad for you or and you just give them the short answer and you actually recognize those moments as teaching points and an opportunity to to expand on why exactly we may not have these foods or why exactly dad gets up extra early every morning to go get his workout in the garage or do these things that aren't maybe maybe the other kids dads aren't doing and why does my dad do those things and why does my dad not have these things in his refrigerator and i think that if you lead by example one and then you two just make sure you recognize those opportunities when they present themselves and you don't just do the because i told you so which so many parents i feel like do and that's where they make the biggest mistake um i think trying to force uh too much uh, will end up backfiring on on you more than anything else. One hundred percent. And what you said is uh, I'll one hundred percent accurate. I think that the biggest thing you could possibly do, by far, is be the example. Your kids learn way more from what you do than what you say. Yep. That's just a fact. You could say whatever the fuck you want, and that's got some influence. Definitely does. But the biggest influence is in how they do it. And, and, you know, as you grow up, you start to realize you start to do things like your parents did. And it's just because you observe them and watch them and you start to kind of copy them. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just the way it is for, uh, for kids. So I had, you know, I had a client once I was really close with and she had a little girl and she'd bring in her daughter every time, you know, every once in a while to work out. And uh, here's an example of, you know, do, they do what you do and not necessarily what you say. And this little girl was, at the time, she probably was 12, 13 maybe. And she was having this conversation. They had walked in for her the workout. So she brought her daughter with her. And her daughter was doing homework, but she was kind of in a bad mood. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? And she's like, oh, we're in a big argument because she wants to wear makeup all the time to school. And I don't want to let her because I think she's too young. And so... While we're working out, because I knew this family for so long, she's having the conversation with her daughter in front of me. Hopefully, I think she was hoping for my input. Mm. And she's like, honey, you don't need to wear makeup. You're beautiful. And she was. She was a gorgeous young young lady. She's like, you're a beautiful young girl. You don't need to wear makeup to be pretty. And the girl's like, no, I do because it makes me prettier and I want to look you know, pretty like my friends, this and that. And she's like, you don't need it. You don't need to wear it to look pretty. You're naturally very beautiful. And she's like, And she told her mom, she goes, well, why do you wear makeup? You're you're pretty. You don't need to wear makeup. You put on makeup every single day. And I, I sat there and I remember thinking like, Oops. She, she got you because, yeah. and that's just an ex, that's just a silly example. But they will 100 percent see what see how you act. And so if you want your kids to have a healthy lifestyle, as it, it's just more work. I know this, but you just have to lead a healthy lifestyle. Well, I do. You guys remember? I mean, I do remember training clients and getting this like the anomaly, right? Getting this lady or male that was 45, 50 years old and they're they're hiring me and they just had these great eating habits and routines or things that they put in place and they were already in really good shape and they were just searching for more knowledge from someone like me. And almost always when I would dive into, you know, go deeper into their childhood, their upbringing, almost always those were the ones that had this really powerful impact by their parents. And it's and it's normally one or the other. Either one, 
their parents were really bad examples and they uh, revolted and became super healthy because they were totally unhealthy parents and bad examples. And then that kid actually got lucky and made out because they chose to go the opposite. Mm -hmm. Or they were parents that were great role models. And even as these the, these older adults, clients, they still remember, man, I remember my mom getting up every morning and running. Like my, my ex-girlfriend, I remember she had some of the best eating habits and it used to blow my mind that she had no cravings, no this. And she just rant and rave about her parents. They were both really, really intelligent and they were both health conscious. And they never like you put it on her. They just lived by it. The whole family always yeah. ate healthy. They always all exercised. They kept themselves in with with manageable way. They always looked leaner and in shape. They just took good care of themselves. And it just translated into a daughter that valued that as she got older and it wasn't a challenge. So I feel like you know, you get one or one or the other with those extremes, and if you either get lucky that you were such a horrible example that your kid revolted and became a health nut, you know, or you implemented those good those good systems. I also think there's a lot of parents that just they just don't realize the damage that they do sometimes. Like I was at the grocery store yesterday, and uh, there was a mom uh, and a dad with their two kids, and the kids, one of the boys was probably six, and the older boy was probably eight. And they're like, Mom, I want to get candy, but let me buy me. And then she's like, okay, if you're good, I'll get you. So they were good. I, I ended up in line behind them. And you're talking about a six-year-old kid. The candy that he chose was gummy bears, but it was a full bag. <laughs> Not like a small, like single serving, but you know the big bags were- He's yeah. a smart kid. He's just uh, like, but, I'm, I'm getting the whole bag. But, but that was his. It was yeah. all his. And yeah. she and he when like, they, a, like a thousand calories. He opened sugar. it and he's just eating out of this bag. <laughs> it counts and as one. You give kids candy and you tell them eat as much as you want and that's what they're going to do. They're going to eat until they get sick. I couldn't believe it. I'm watching yeah. these kids were both What's already on their way to overweight. I could see it. Uh, and I'm just like, oh man, like if she only knew like how how much of a poison yeah. she's doing, like how much she's impacting her child's future. Well, it's, it's hard not to that. see that now. It's so bad. Well, yeah. well, people don't make the connection too. I remember you gave this analogy one time on the podcast a long time ago, and I thought it was such a great point of you know, the size of the kid in comparison to you. Like what yeah, that, a, 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 yeah, a yeah. little six-year-old eating a bag of gummy bears would literally be like equivalent to you as a grown-ass adult sitting down and eating a whole fucking cake to yourself. Like you would, that just seems absurd. Yeah. Like who yeah. would sit down and drill a whole full-size cake from like 31 yeah. flavors? Like you would never do that. I know, and that's right. I, that I just know. sounds absurd, but that's what you're doing when, the, when a six-year-old eats a 1500 calorie fucking bag of gummy bears. Dude, I did that at a party Crazy. because I was at a birthday party years ago. My kids were real young and there were cookies. They were giving out cookies. And so I took one cookie and I broke it into yes, is the three story pieces. I broke it into three pieces and gave my kids one third of a cookie. And I got dirty looks from the parents, like, because they know I'm in fitness, right? So they think, oh, God, you're just managing your kid. <laughs> and so one of the moms said something like, once my kids left, thankfully she waited, because if she said it in front of my kids, it would have been, uh, it would have been a, a severe blasting. Yeah. But she goes, gosh, she goes, I know you're in fitness and stuff, but why don't you just give your kid a full a cookie? And so I said, hold on a second. So I called my kid back. So he came back in the room and I said, let me see your hand. And he says, okay. So he gives me his little hand. He's got a little kid hand. And I put his little kid hand up to the cookie and I put my hand up to the cookie. And I said, him eating this cookie would be the equivalent of me eating a cookie this big. And I drew it with my hand. And I'm like, I would never eat a cookie that big. It's just massive. He's, I'm like, he's a little kid. These cookies are okay for me to eat one, but he's so small that one cookie to him is the equivalent of me eating one that would be this massive circular thing and you could see the look on her face was kind of like oh shit it's a cookie cake right? i never thought of that and it's like well yeah he's fucking the kid weighs 30 pounds yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna give him a full cookie for a 30 pound kid uh, it's crazy that's all right dude i i literally took my kid out of uh, a soccer league just because after every single game they would give them a free like either it was a popsicle or ice cream uh like a, a popsicle stick yeah and i was just like i just got i'm like right before dinner you're gonna fucking give him <laughs> All of this sugar, and this is like the entire reasoning for them after that. Like, I want to go play soccer because I get the fucking popsicle. <laughs> that was the only reason Fuck why the sport, he would play. I want the popsicle. That's and so like, great. That's how kids might. I don't like. Ah, oh, I was getting like I got so pissed off. Like, we're not fucking signing up for this shitty league again. 
Is that the league? That's that, the only thing. Is that like the league, or is it the parent that is actually in charge of the snacks? Is that how? No, it, when it, we were kids. It, it was, was like, a truck that that would like show up, and it was like part of the league's deal with them, and they they like worked out some kind of weird deal. <sighs> oh wow, dude! Whenever my that's kid, like smart business one hundred and one right there. So well, let's, yeah, let's get I them mean, addicted to candy. Their, their parents. Will it have literally them. looked like <laughs> it looked oh, like wow. some drug dealer. Come on, like, dude, pulling you, up. You, you, know? ever, you <laughs> ever go? It's like yeah, the cocaine is here. You ever see like functions, like school functions at parks, and then mysteriously ice cream man freaking drive by they're real smart there, aren't <laughs> yeah. they oh yeah yeah no my i uh when i would have to buy because you would rotate for buying the like the the, the treat or whatever after the game for the yeah. parents you always knew when it was <laughs> my turn. asshole parent yeah. i was always Me the asshole too. parent be yeah. like you know tangerines and like yeah. or, organic cheese sticks or apples something like that. with peanut butter and, huh? then, and you know the kids would always go through and i'd hand out the bags yeah. and they'd open the bags and they'd, be like, they'd yeah. all look at it like mm. Yeah, they'd the walk Stefano. away. Off. Yeah, pissed the off. Stefano. <laughs> <laughs> Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. The next one is from Heather R. Bug. Using your personalities and characteristics alone, if you were a junk food candy, what would you be? And if you were a healthy food, what would you be? <laughs> and you can't answer for yourself. Gosh. So we're answering for each I'm other. A junk food. Uh, let's, Sal would be a broccolini and oh, for sure for his, <laughs> for, rapini or yeah is that yeah, rapi- yeah, yeah rapini, rapini for his healthy for food sure. and his junk dripped food. in olive oil and yeah exactly <laughs> and his junk food would be he would be coconut ice cream oh yeah, yeah. that would be can't be dairy yeah that no. would be that, no, that would be would, my guess be if I had to, and if I'd I, be delicious Justin would be if he was a healthy food yeah. He would be a grass-fed bison burger <laughs> on sprouted, like yeah. organic wheat Ooh. bread with uh, you know organic uh, full-fat cheddar. With some, God, with some, I sound delicious. With some <laughs> uncured bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah with some bacon, bacon and some avo- don't forget sausage and some avocado. You can't miss there. the cheese on yeah, it too. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have some sort of cheese. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. full-fat cheddar. One hundred percent accurate. If Justin, that's was, his. That's his yeah. healthy. That's his healthy dish. I'm so healthy. I'm so grass-fed. You know what I mean? You're just a steer. <laughs> I just see you as a big just steer. Meaty and cheesy. Yeah, and delicious. This, yeah. Junk food? Junk food? He'd Justin, be a big glazed donut. You think? <laughs> you think donut? He'd be a glazed donut. Oh, okay. I, I, you know, when I look at him, I think of like a, he's it's a big- because of the cheeks, huh? I think yeah. he's a big uh, Reese's cup. Thank you. Uh, a big I mean, that's, ac- that's probably more accurate yeah. is what like a really would big, eat. Like yeah. a really big one. Yeah, it's, it's like kind of like savory, <laughs> but yeah. it's sweet. The yeah. ones that come around the holiday that are those one pound. Yeah, yeah, the big yeah. old, like, yeah, the yeah bucket one size one. God, what would Adam, Adam would be like a jelly bean or, you know. <laughs> a jelly bean? <laughs> what the fuck? You know, I Something think- that's just, no, no, pixie dust. You yeah, know, he's pixie like, sticks? Just like pure artificial, like sugar shit. Oh, the pixie stick? A yeah. fun dip candy. Yeah, yeah the fun dip. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. I, you, you can know, also snort it as cocaine. Right. Yeah. You know what yeah. you know, comes across, comes to my mind for Adam as a candy would say red vines. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know, That's, just, a, good That's it, a good call. That's a good call. It's all just pure yeah. sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got to be like, like the purest. That's yeah. how I was thinking pixie. You yeah. nailed it with the, the dipping dots. Hel- yeah. Healthy food, pff, uh, chicken, rice, broccoli. Mm. Yeah, I feel like he'd be I think tilapia. He'd be or something like that. No, I don't, I don't even eat tilapia. <laughs> I know, but I just yeah. I just think. Yeah, of that. right, right, right. I just think of that. Uh, that's all. <laughs> uh, that's so there you generic. go. That's so our generic. that's our healthy junk food versions of. Uh, I'm the grossest. Not, like none of my shit is appealing uh, to anyone. Uh, <laughs> coconut ice cream, maybe, but yeah, yeah. coconut ice cream's God, good. Damn it! Oh, that sounds delicious. I thought it's you guys refreshing. would say sardines for me or something like that. Oh, that could have we missed broccolini or sardines. Both those are definitely right away when I think of healthy food and you come to mind because I just and there's something about. Those those memories of us being in the small studio. Yeah, you yeah. bring a whole tub of that. Yeah, right? of Sal Just eating drenched. his broccolini and re, and re, and microwaving again, so he'd smell the whole studio oh would smell God. like that. And, and then he, he would microwave fish. Uh, Who's that guy? So I I don't yeah. think I could I p- possibly get that out of my head. So for sure yeah. you're one of those yeah. for sure. I just don't. I'm get glad it. it's nostalgia now. I mean, it's not still <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah. Hey, look. If you like fitness information and you just can't get enough and you want to learn more, the best place to get it besides our podcast is our YouTube channel. Blessed. We post a new video every single day on that channel. So subscribe to it. It's Mind Pump TV, and you'll get a, a notification every time we post a video. 
Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on these episodes, the place to do it is on Instagram. Our Instagram page is Mind Pump Media. We'll also have uh, personal Instagram pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Justin is Mind Pump Justin, and Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.